students welcome back to our youtube channel and this is the 10th class in real analysis so in today's lecture we are going to start a very interesting topic that what are the count table sets so that is the topic for the day what is the meaning of count table sets and how do we study about what are count table and how do we understand this word count table in mathematics so let's start from the definition of a real sequence so what is a real sequence in mathematics so let us formally define what is a sequence so basically students whenever somebody ask you what is a sequence so you should reply in just one line that a sequence is nothing but a function so when we say a sequence is a function it means it must have some particular domain and for the sequence we define the domain to be the set of all naturals and the co domain can be any set of any set of reals so that is something called a real sequence in mathematics so a mapping basically which is defined from the set of naturals into the set of real number is known as a real sequence in mathematics so i hope this thing is clear to you now right and generally we denote this sequence we denote this as sometimes we are denoting the sequence as an right sometime it is denoted as sn sometime it is denoted as s of n the range of the sequence so if i am denoting the sequence by an so that is always contained in that is reals right that is always contained in reals okay so that is all about the uh, this is real sequence in mathematics now the another terminology which all of us should understand before we proceed with this topic of countability so that is what are equivalent sets in mathematics so what are equivalent sets so it is high time that we should understand this term equivalent sets so two sets if we have two sets let us consider two sets a and b so if two sets a and b are said to be equivalent are said to be equivalent so when do we say these are equivalent sets simple if there exists a map if there exists a map so f is a map which is defined from a to b such that f is bijective so f is bijective and when we call f to be bijective what does it mean it means f is 1 1 and on 2 right so two sets a and b they will be said to be equivalent if f is nothing but 1 1 and on 2 right so f a is equivalent to b now let us consider an example to understand this for example if i say a set of naturals that is 1 2 3 up till so on to let us consider another set to be the set of even naturals 2 4 6 8 up till so on right now if i define a function f from naturals to this set e and i define the map to be nothing but f of x equals to 2x so already we can see that so if we have naturals here 1 2 3 up till so on and here we have f of x equals to 2x so 1 is getting mapped to 2 2 is getting mapped to 4 3 is getting mapped to 6 and so on right so f is clearly f is clearly 1 1 and on 2 clearly you can check it out f is 1 1 yes f is on 2 yes why on 2 because the core domain the core domain that is nothing but e is equal to the range so when core domain becomes equal to range we say that the map is on 2 so clearly we can understand that this map is 1 1 and on 2 that is bijective so therefore the set of naturals is equivalent to the set of even naturals right so that is how we define the sets to be the equivalent sets right again let us consider one more problem so if i consider a set to be that is a finite set con containing 0 and 1 and let me consider b set to be 2 comma 5 and now i want to check that whether a and b are equivalent or not for, th for this we need to define a map f right that is defined from a to b yes or no now how can we define the map so that this function is well defined so let us consider f of x to be 3x plus 2 clearly you can check f of 0 will get mapped to 2 and f of 1 will get mapped to 5 so again you can say that this map f is 1 1 and on 2 so if it is bijective and hence from here we can clearly say that a is equivalent to b so that is all about equivalent sets in mathematics again 
before we come to the before we jump to the countable sets let us now talk about what are finite sets and infinite sets in mathematics so what are finite sets so there are two ways to define finite sets in mathematics number 1 number 1 if you start counting the number of elements in a particular set the counting stops at a particular time that is if the cardinality of the set is finite right if the cardinality of the set is finite we call that set to be a finite set right or there is another definition also for the finite sets if s is finite then if you consider any subset of s like right so if you consider a to be any subset of s then if you define a map from a to s so a and s they will never be equivalent so that is the second definition which we can discuss about the finite sets if i have a set of first five natural numbers now if you consider any proper subset let us consider to be a proper subset that is 1 2 3 4 right and of course you can consider any other proper subset also clearly the cardinality of s will never become equal to the cardinality of a that is s is not equivalent to a right right but here we can clearly see that the cardinality of s is not equal to cardinality of a so again it is not a finite set and what about infinite set the set which is not finite set which is not finite right so that is an infinite set again if you consider any proper subset and that proper subset must have the cardinality equal to the set itself for example we have already seen the set of naturals right and the set of even naturals right and you have defined a map in the above example also right so you defined that n is equivalent to e yes e is a proper subset of natural right and both these sets are equivalent and hence it satisfy the definition of infinite sets right so that is the definition of a infinite set so that is all about finite and infinite sets i hope this thing is clear to all of you now right so it's high time that we discuss what is countable set what is a countable set so let's talk about now countable set in mathematics so when do we say a set is countable number 1 a set is said to be countable if it is either finite if either it is finite or or in the other case that is an infinite set an infinite set a is said to be countable is said to be countable if a is equivalent to the set of naturals and very important line this is what does this line means this line means there exists a map there exists a function f which is defined from a to n and this map this f has some special property because it is equivalent it implies f is bijective so basically we define a infinite set to be countable and if i want to define an infinite set to be countable i have to draw a map right so f is a map which is defined from a to n and this map should be bijective and if we are able to do this thing we will conclude that the set is a countable set right now let us consider few examples so the example number 1 is any infinite sequence obviously all the finite sets they will be countable so we will not discuss about finite sets anymore we uh, we will talk about infinite sets so any infinite sequence so that is a1 a2 right a3 and it is going right and of distinct elements so any infinite set of distinct elements is countable is countable so let us try to understand this example now so the solution so we have defined f is a function obviously it is a sequence so the domain will be naturals as we have discussed in the beginning of the lecture to the set x right and what is the set x now x is a set nothing but the sequence a1 a2 up till so on right and how do i define the sequence f of n gets mapped to a n for all n coming from naturals so basically if i talk about number 1 f of 
it will get mapped to A1. What about F2? This will get mapped to A2. So every element of the set of natural will have some image in the set X. So can I say that yes, F is bijective, F is 1, 1 and on 2. And since F is 1, 1 and on 2, it implies that the cardinality of set N will be equal to the cardinality of set X. That is, N is equivalent to X, right? And when N is equivalent to X, so that is nothing but the definition of a countable set. So we can conclude here is that uh, the infinite sequence is a countable set. Again, let us consider one more problem. So example number two, that is if I consider to be a sequence that is 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4 up till so on. So I have to prove that again A is countable. So in order to prove A to be a countable set, so what we need to do, we need to define a map right from naturals to the set A and clearly you all can see f of natural number will get mapped to 1 upon that natural number. Right? You can clearly see 1 will get mapped to 1, 2 will get mapped to 1 by 2, 3 will get mapped to 1 by 3 and so on. So clearly this function f is bijective. And on the same lines as quoted in the previous example, we can say that the set of naturals is equivalent to the set A and therefore the set A is a countable set, is a countable set. So in this video lecture, what we have discussed is we started from what is a real sequence. We also discussed about equivalent sets. We also discussed about various examples on equivalent sets. Then we talked about the finite sets, infinite set and countable set and some basic examples related to these sets. In the upcoming lectures, we will talk about how the set of integers, how the set of rationals, they are countable or not and if they are countable and then how they are countable and various problems related to this concept. So I hope you have understood this video lecture. For more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you so much students.